dear students we will continue our discussion let us recapitulate some of the important aspect of wind power generation so firstly we will include the different types of wind turbine rotors and the wind speed or wind power characteristics then we will introduce the concept of wind farms then design problems of wind turbine so if we talk about characteristics of various type of rotors we have variety of rotors we have discussed like propeller then the, we have american multi-bladed type then savonius type and many more and out of which there are some rotors which are based on the principle of drag design and some are lift design primarily the lift designs are used for power generation applications of course we can use it for pumping water but mostly it is used for power generation applications what you can see here but drag type machines are mostly used for pumping applications because it has higher torque compared to the lift type design and also we can compare with respect to the tip speed ratio of the wind turbines so for example propeller turbine is having higher tip speed ratio okay and also torque is low and that's why it is mostly preferred turbine for generation of electricity and other turbines you can see the tip speed ratios like we have savonius it is one and american multi-blade it is again one again we can classify in terms of rated power if the rated power varies from 10 to 25 kilowatt then we call it as small wind turbines or wind power generators or wind turbine generators and if it ranges from 50 to 150 we call it as medium then 250 to 1000 is large and 2000 to 4000 is extra large and uh, as we know when we are calculating power we need to consider diameter so these are related as the scale increases the diameter of the wind turbine also increases which can be seen in the medial rows but the rpm of the smaller machines will be higher compared to the large machine which is also visible in this comparison table we can further see it carefully like based on the resources also we can classify say for example if we have wind power density in the range of 100 to 150 and wind speed is about 4.3 to 5 then we call it as fair wind power resource which is available for power harvesting of course this data what we have presented here is at a height of 30 meter from the ground and this is the hub height and if the wind power density varies from 150 to about 300 watt per meter square and also wind speed is varies from about 5 to 6.3 then we call it as good resource and if the wind power density varies from 300 to maybe 1000 we call it as excellent and at the same time we can see the variation of wind speed which might vary from 6.3 to about 10 meter per second also we can see this plot which is representing maximum power in one axis and then rotor diameter is another axis and in secondary axis we can have wind speed so these all are related so maximum power as a function of rotor diameter and wind speed which can be visible by looking into this plot the power increases as the square of the rotor diameter if we go back to the equation like if we are interested about pe it will be cp multiplied by half rho a e infinity cube okay so 
when we are seeing area it is something like swept area pi d square by 4 is the swept area and u infinity is the velocity right. So, it is cube. So, that is what it is said power increases as the square of the rotor diameter and more significantly as the cube of the wind speed okay? and it can be seen something like this and also if we see this figure tells about power output versus instantaneous wind speed at two different height from the ground. So, this first curve is at a height of 40 meter and second plot is at a height of 80 meter. So, what we can see here as you go on installing the wind turbine at higher altitude then we are going to have higher energy conversion and we can have more energy harvesting. And if we talk about mode of wind power generations we can have standalone mode and grid connected mode. Of course, we can think of some kind of hybrid technologies like wind and diesel and also sometimes solar and wind hybrid system based on the resource availability and need of application. Now, in general if we talk about block diagram of a wind energy conversion system it comprises of this rotor part then gearing and coupling generators then interface grid or local load and these are controlled by control units. Of course, in order to control the speed we need to have pitch control mechanism as well. So, these are the components which are required to harvest energy from wind generators. So, now let us take an example on standalone water pumping system run by solar energy. So, problem goes something like calculate the main dimensions of the rotor of a multi blade wind machine operating at a design wind speed of 22 kilometer per hour. The machine operates a water pump having a capacity of 4.5 cubic meter per hour and the lift of 8 meter. Considering the efficiency of reciprocating pump as 62 percent and transmission efficiency from the rotor to the pump is 92 percent. We can consider the number of blades in the rotor is 16. As you know normally in case of multi bladed wind turbine the number of blades varies from 12 to 20. So, we can consider any of the blades. So, in our case we are considering 16 is the number of blades and also we can assume the rotor is delivering the maximum value of CP at the design wind speed and blade length is 1.4 meter. So, these are the values given to us. Let us do the analysis and find out the dimensions which are required for designing this water pumping system. So, if we consider the speed what is given to us is u infinity 22 kilometer per hour. Okay? So, this can be converted to meter per second. So, if it is 22, 22 multiplied by 1000 this will be converting kilometer to meter. So, this will be meter and I am converting hour to second it is 60 multiplied by 60 it will be 3600 second and this will give you a value of 6.11 meter per second. Okay? And this charge which is given to us is 4.5 cubic meter per hour and we can consider the density of water is 1000 kg per cubic meter. Okay? Now, we need to calculate the ideal power required to pump the water. The ideal power required to 
pump the water which is something like p rho into z then q into h rho is the density of water z is the acceleration due to gravity q is the discharge or flow rate and h is the head okay so if we substitute the values rho is 1000 z value is 9.81 and discharge is 4.5 so we have to convert to second from hour so it will be 3600 then how much head is given to us is 8 okay so if we do the calculation then p is found to be 98.1 watt so here we can check whether our expression is correct or not so density is kg per cubic meter and z dimension is meter per second square and discharge is cubic meter per second here already we have converted to second and h is in meter so this may be discarded then kg meter per second this part is newton and then this is meter newton meter is joule and this second the joule per second is watt okay so this is correct this is what fine so the power required at the rotor so you must understand here suppose this is the wind turbine and th this is the power which is ideal power to pump the water so we have this is the pump okay so we are using this and th this is the ideal power what we have calculated now power required at the rotor so we need to calculate the transmission efficiency because cable is required and at the same time we need to calculate the pump efficiency okay so this power is equal to you have 98.1 divided by pump efficiency is 62% and this transmission is 92% so that means it will be 0.62 multiplied by we have 0.92 so this will give a value of 171.98 watt this is p right now assuming the rotor is delivering the maximum value of cp at the design wind speed so if we consider then we have to take help of this chart okay so now since we are considering this turbine okay and also we are assuming the rotor is delivering maximum value of cp at the design unit speed okay so maximum cp we can find out from here this plot so this cp max will be 0 0.15 and what will be the corresponding lambda value which is tip speed ratio and this is cp okay so lambda will be here so this will be as per the scale if we make so lambda will be about 0 0.8 okay so we know we have cp is equal to pe divided by half rho a e infinity cube okay if cp is known to us it is 0.15 and pe what we have calculated now is 171.98 divided by half rho is 1.2 density of air and we have pi 
r square is the area swept area and then already we know what is the speed in meter per second 6.11 cube okay so if we do the calculation then r square value is found to be 2.6667 and r we can say it is 1.633 meter fine so also we know now this number of blade what we have considered is 16 as the number of blades of a multiplayer turbine varies from 12 to 20. So, we have picked 16 from there and if number of blade is more means solidity will be high. Okay? So, if we see like uh, if we have tp speed ratio is 0 0.8 here 0 0.8 if we draw a vertical line then this is found to be almost 0.5 solidity. So, at lambda is 0 0.8 then solidity will be 0 0.5 okay? and blade length is given to us is 1.4 meter. Right? So, we know the definition of solidity right so solidity is represented by this gamma and uh, it is something like if you know n and then you know the length and then we know the chord length because if we see aerofoil say aerofoil was something like this okay and this was something like this so this part was the length and this is the chord like this is chord C. So, C into L will give you the area okay? area of a particular blade. So, there are n number of blades that is n is 16 number of blades. So, that is how this part this numerator is considering all the solid part okay? and then what we need is the swept area fine. So, now we can calculate the value of C here because R is known and gamma is 0 0.5 pi and R is 1.633 square n is 16 l is 1.4 and we need to find out the c okay so if we do the calculation c is found to be 0 0.187 this will be in meter right so now what we need to calculate is the omega okay rotational speed we need to find out so how how to find out this omega we need omega for that we know the relationship lambda is omega into r divided by u infinity so from here we can find out omega which is nothing but lambda u infinity divided by r so these values are known to us now lambda is 0 0.8 and u infinity is maybe you have to go back u 6.11 6.11 then we need r r is 1.633 okay so from here we can find out the value of omega which is about 2.993 radian per second. Okay? So, once we know this omega then we can find out what is rpm because we know omega is twice pi 
n divided by 60. So, if we substitute the value of omega here, then we can very easily find out the values of n. So, this n is found to be 28.58 rpm. Okay. So, in this problem, we tried to calculate all the design parameters for a multi bladed wind turbines, including the rotational speed, which is required to generate about 171.9 watt of power. Also, we have calculated the other design parameters. Now, move on to the grid connected wind turbine and wind farms. So, what we did first, we have analyzed the wind data and uh, from that we have confirmed the availability of wind for installation of a wind turbine. So, once that is done, this wind resources has been in investigated and also sometimes estimated because there are certain locations where there is no instrument to measure the wind data but we can take help of statistical model like wavell distribution to find out the wind energy potential for a particular location right once this part is over then what is next we need to go for technical planning of installation of grid connected wind electricity generators so for this we have to go for two phases in first phase, we need to do site survey like land availability, characteristics of location, then landscape profile. And second phase will go for micro seating of wind electric generator. The specific seating of wind electric generators to optimize the power output is very, very essential for getting maximum power conversion. So, under the phase 1, what are the things include? Land required. So, as per the MNRE mandate that is new and renewable energy in India, they have specified that 12 hectares per megawatt is required having wind power density in excess of 200 watt per meter square at 50 meter hub height. And of course, accessibility to wind project site because connecting roads are required to carry the generators, wind blades and all other heavy instrument and long instruments, long accessories. Soil characteristics are also very, very important because this has to be built in a strong way so that if something goes wrong with wind speed, it should not break or something goes wrong with respect to the small earthquake, it should not break easily. So, characterization is very, very important. Then state grid that is grid proximity. Say if the design plant is about 10 megawatt, so in 20 kilometer distance from the site of installation that no state grid should be available. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to evacuate the power what we generate. And of course, there are other parameters which influences the performance like temperature, salt and sand concentration because if it is installed near to the sea then salt and sand will mix with air which may corrode the turbine blades. And of course, we need to monitor the relative humidity as well. So, as far as installation of wind machines are concerned they install in a way like you no, know, the distance between two wind turbines is almost equal to 5 times the diameter of the rotor. So, if we consider 250 kilowatt wind turbine, it will have a diameter of 25 meter. So, 5 into 25 that means 125 meter distance should be there between two turbines. Again, if we are installing serially, then in second rows, the distance between these wind machines will be 10 times the diameter of the 
rotor. Okay? So, that is how it is h is equal to 10 d. So, that way it will come next row will come and that distance will be again 10 d, but the distance between the two generators or wind turbines will be 5 d. So, as far as specific setting of wind electric generators for maximization of power output is concerned, a visual inspection of the land to understand the topography of the terrain that is wind electric generators are to be installed at the highest level of the land to reduce the turbulence. This is very, very important and the specific configuration and orientation of array is required for maximization of efficiency. Of course, we need to think about losses which might cause due to shadow effect. So, this is also one of the concerns we need to think of. Now, we need to learn about power curves of wind electric generators. So, here we are considering two wind turbines having rated capacity 225 kilowatt and 500 kilowatt. So, horizontal axis shows the wind speed and vertical axis shows the power extracted. So, as the wind speed increases, this power extraction increases and after certain points, so it will be constant and it will reach a cutout values. So, here you can say this is the cut in speed. So, slowly it will start and maybe you can start with this and this is the rated speed, this point is here and this point is here and we have to cut somewhere here because at very high speed this rotor cannot operate because of the turbulence. Okay? But behavior of this machine you can see is different. This is at 500 kilowatt and this is at 225 kilowatt. So, these wind electric generators are commercially available in the capacities range of 1 kilowatt to about 3 megawatt. So, one unit can produce 3 megawatt, it is a big unit. And of course, we need to specify these parameters as well when we are concerned about power curves like what is the density of air, turbulence and then what is the frequency. Now, let us discuss about selection of optimum wind electric generators. So, this firstly we must know this production of electricity depends on what are the parameters like mean speed of the wind at the particular site, then characteristics of wind electric generators, then half height, cutting speed, rated and furling speed of the machine. And this selection is primarily based on the calculated values of the annual energy generated using the power curve of wind electric generators with annual capacity factor and annual capacity utilization factor. The power density is calculated from the wind data over a period of few years to select an optimum wind electric generator using Weibull parameters. The technical specifications of these two rated wind electric generators are something like if we talk about 225 kilowatt rotor diameter will be 27, half will be 32 that is half height, voltage delivered will be about 400 volt and cutting speed 3.5 cut out 25 meter per second and the kind of brake utilizes full fettering of blades and control is microprocessor in both the cases. For 500 kilowatt generators, voltage delivery will be higher compared to 225 kilowatt, it will be about 690 and cut in and cut out the speed are almost same. How much will be about 50 meter. So, as you go on increasing the height, then we will get more wind. So, that is how we can get more uh, efficiency. Now, let us learn the energy path from wind farm to grid and the users. So, now 
you consider this is a wind farm where a lot of wind turbines are installed as per the design principle and lot of measuring techniques are there like we need anemometer always vent type anemometer is normally used which measures the wind velocity and of course we need some kind of computerized site control or monitoring system sometimes it is called scada system it monitors all those parameters primarily it will give the health of the entire plant and also we know the amount of energy generated at a particular point of time so this wind machine if we consider a single wind machine it can provide 400 volt if its capacity is about 225 kilowatt okay now this has to be step up like that may be converter or transformer okay so from 400 to 11 kV we need to step up right then we need to take it to overhead transmission line and again we can step up to the site of substation for grid connection so it may be 22 kV or maybe 33 kV or maybe 66 kV which is high tension lines of grids so depending upon the plant size then we can think how we can harvest the energy okay and finally we can give it to the end users like residential houses factories and offices okay in nutshell we have to transfer the energy what we generate here to the utility point by using this electrical transmission system and the same time to monitor the health of the plant we need to have a computerized systems where we get all the data how much energy is generated and how much energy to be given to the discom and locally it is used including the amount of energy consumed by the scatter system so there are different methods of grid connections we can have electrical system for single array wind farms or electrical system for multi array wind farm so here in this case this is the bus bar here 11 kV or 33 kV we need to push so one transformer is connected with two wind turbine generators okay here you can see this is one set and this is another set and then resultant things it is given to this bus bar and step up is done up to maybe 11 kV or maybe 33 kV so here what happens four wind turbine generators are attached with a single generators so two sets are shown here and you can see the distance between these two is about 250 meter but for this case it is 50 meter and then they are transmitted to a common bus bar so once it is done then what we can do we can have different wind turbines then we have controller then transformer from 400 volt to 11 kV and then we can transmit it to the grid at 66 kV which is the grid substation okay so these all are electrical lines and make sure this distance should be less than 20 km otherwise it will be very difficult to transfer the amount of energy generated to the main grid so this is the electrical system of wind farm with grids and we are assuming 66 kV grid substation is located 20 km away from the wind farm of 10 megawatt wind turbine capacity we can talk of grid interfacing of wind turbine so how it is possible like wind turbine generators or wind energy generators or maybe wind electric generators generate at 400 volt which is stepped up to 11 kV then overhead transmission lines connect to the substation for grid connections then the power evacuation may be done on 11 kV or 22 kV or maybe 30 kV line based on availability of distribution network and 
number of wind electric generators installed in the wind farm. And we can see the type of interfacing for different capacities of wind electric generators. So, if the capacity of the plant is up to 2 megawatt, then this existing infrastructure is sufficient that is 11 kV or 22 kV line. But if the capacity varies from 2 megawatt to 6 megawatt, then we need separate 22 kV or 11 kV lines and if it is 6 to 10 megawatt, separate 33 kV line is required and above 10 megawatt, we need 66 kV or 110 kV substation at the wind farm site. So, these are the type of interfacing for different capacities of wind electric generators. Now, let us take one more problem like find the electric power output of a three bladed propeller type wind machine which operating at a constant rotor speed of 24 rpm. The cutting speed, design speed and cutout speed of the machine are 15, 35 and 85 kilometer per hour respectively and mechanical efficiency of the wind machine is 93 percent and generator efficiency is given as 97 percent. The machine is installed at a height of 60 meter from the ground and rotor diameter is 64 meter. We need to plot the variation of electric power output with wind speed. Also, we need to calculate the annual plant load factor if the annual energy output of the machine is given as 2786244 kilowatt hour and value of this coefficient is which take care of drag and lift is given as 0 0.012 and density of air is 1.23 kg per cubic meter. So, we need to take help of these equations tp speed ratio lambda is omega into r by u infinity. So, for a single case we can do it say omega twice pi n by 60. So, twice pi n is 24 divided by 60 which is radian per second. Then so, what is the value of r is 64, r is so diameter, diameter is 64, 64 meter. So, radius will be 64 by 2 which is 32 meter ok and uh, cutting speed is 15. So, if infinity if we say cutting is 15 kilometer per hour which is nothing but 15 into 1000 divided by 3600 which will give you in meter per second ok. So, why I am not solving it because I have solved in a spreadsheet. So, you will get the information there and uh, this expression we need to use because this parameter is given to us it is epsilon it take care of the drag coefficient. And once we know this, then we can find out what is power extracted by the wind machine. So, let us click the spreadsheet calculation here. So, what I did speed I am varying from 15 to 85 because 15 is the cutting speed and we have 35 is the rated speed and 85 is the cutout speed. Okay. So, here this is the formula. So, we have made it. So, all the formulas are here. We have embedded here and done the calculation. So, at different speeds what will be the value of power extracted? So, that is calculated. So, what is more important for us is 35 which is the rated speed. Okay. And then after that we cannot operate the machine because at this speed we will get the maximum power delivery. So, 
we can plot this like by taking speed and the power extracted. So, it goes something like this. So, I am making this constant because we are not allowing the turbine to operate beyond this 35 kilometer per hour. Okay. So, that is how it looks something like this. Okay. So, if we go back to our calculation, so we will get something like this. Okay. This is the result of the experiment what we have done with the data generated by using this problem. So, this value is found to be 957.5987 at 35 kilometer per hour. Okay. So, we have been asked to calculate this and to generate this plot already we have done it. Okay. Now, next question was to find out the annual plant load factor which is defined as the ratio of annual energy output of a machine to the energy output which would be obtained if the design wind speed was available throughout the year. Okay. So, if we calculate it, it is found to be about 33.21 percent. So, this value is given to us and this is the power at the rated speed and 8760 is the hour yearly. So, 365 multiplied by 24 what we will get is 8760. Then this is found to be 33.21 percent and this is known as the annual plant load factor. right? So, from this we can conclude many more things like you know, how nicely the plant is running at that particular condition. Now, let us discuss once we have this power then we can use it many of the applications, but sometimes it might so happen that we have generated power, but we do not have the load during that time. So, we need to have some kind of storage system. Let us learn how we can couple with storage system. So, one scheme is using compressed air. So, what we can do during the time of off peak hours, we can store the energy in the form of compressed air and when we require energy, then we can release the compressed air and we can run the generator and we produce electricity to meet the demand. So, that is how it is shown. So, highly compressed air is sent down the tower into the underground storage, it may be caverns, it may be natural gas cavern or maybe salt cavern and depleted gas well through pipelines and pressurized air is released when needed to power an electrical energy or electricity generator. And also we can run the electrolyzer. So, for wind turbines which power output to 20 kilowatt direct current can be used to charge batteries directly and AC generators can be used for higher ratings. So, DC output can be used in an electrolyzer to produce hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen stored in the tank can be used to produce electricity using fuel cells. So, schemes are shown here this is the wind turbines. So, we can you know, produce hydrogen by using water splitting technology and that hydrogen again we can use it for electricity generation by using fuel cell technology. And also we can think of pumping the water to a height and we can store in the form of potential energy and when required we can use it back by releasing the water from the stored vessel and then we can run the generator to produce electricity. So, excess power generated from the wind turbine can be utilized to store water at the high reservoir of a pump storage plant and same can be utilized when required. So, these are the three schemes of energy storage as far as storage of wind power is concerned. Also, there are some environmental aspects of wind turbines as you can see here. So, 
it is indirect energy use and emissions are always there. Then birds life because it says they could not fly in streamlines when many wind turbines are installed. And noise is an issue like mechanical noise due to movement of the mechanical parts in the nacelle and aerodynamic noise. Visual impact is always there, telecommunication interference, safety and effect on ecosystem. These aspects we need to look into when we are installing big wind farms. So, these are the references we have used for preparing the presentations on wind energy conversion systems. Now, we can summarize what we have discussed in the module wind power generation. So, we have started with wind energy scenario in national and global aspects. Then how wind energy technologically progressing, then data analysis and estimation of data with the help of weevil distribution. Then we have studied performance parameters like solidity, tip speed ratio, then drag coefficient, leaf coefficient and then power coefficients. And also we have derived the CP which is known as base limit. So, what maximum conversion is possible that has been demonstrated mathematically and also standalone and grid connected wind electricity generators were discussed exclusively and concept of wind farms were introduced and also we have solved sufficient number of numerical problems to understand the complex situations. I hope you have got an overview about the wind energy conversion system. Thank you very much for watching this video.